Hey everybody, Chris the Old Ass Retro Gamer here, and I'm back for another video game collection live stream. Today I'm going to be talking about the first part uh, of two, where I'm going to be talking about my Xbox collection, my OG Xbox collection. I've really taken a, a, a new interest in the console, collecting for it lately because of the PlayStation 2 live stream collection videos that I was doing. Uh, while I was doing those videos, if you were there, if you were not, I'm going to explain it again. Um, as I was going through my PlayStation 2 video games in those live streams, I kept on realizing that I would rather have certain multiplats for the Xbox. Because a lot of them output in HD on the Xbox and not on the uh, PlayStation 2. At least not well on the PlayStation 2. The Xbox was kind of designed to do HD before HD was even a thing, which is kind of awesome. So... Why am I doing these live streams? I bring this up in every one of these streams. It's not to brag. It's not to, you know, show off that I've got so many games and you don't type of thing. It's nothing like that. Um, it's just to have a visual record of what I have in my collection currently. Um, I've been buying games. I've been selling games that I don't like in my collection. Uh, stuff that you saw in one of my pickup videos back in the day might not even be in my collection anymore. It's a way to update that. And also, you know... Just in case something happens, I have a visual record of everything in my collection. So in case like something bad happens, I can say I owned this. You saw it in my hands. It was mine. There. So what's up? What's up? I am too quick. What's up? Welcome. Um. So let's do a little history thing first when it, uh, when it comes to me and the Xbox. So when the Xbox was first released in, what was it, 2001, I had zero interest in it. At nothing. Not at all. I had a PlayStation 2 already. I still had my Dreamcast. And uh, I had a GameCube. I'd just gotten a Game... Uh, well, at the time it was released, I hadn't gotten the GameCube yet. But, you know, I had a GameCube when I ended up getting the Xbox. Um, I knew that Microsoft had a hand in the development of the operating system on the Dreamcast, which I absolutely love. Still love to this day. And when the Dreamcast went belly up, uh, the guy who was in charge of Sega America went to Bill Gates and says, Hey, you helped with the creation of the Dreamcast, you know, help us with the operating system on that. Would you help us by, you know, investing some money in it so we can keep it alive for a little bit longer? And Bill Gates went, No, uh, everything that we've learned helping you out is going to go towards our new console that we're developing. So now that you're bowing out, we're going to take your place. And it really rubbed me the wrong way. And I said, the hell with the Xbox. I never want to have, I don't have anything to do with it at all. The hell with those guys. And I was happy with, my, you know, I still was playing my Dreamcast. Um, PlayStation 2 I thought was great. GameCube I thought was great. And it wasn't until, I want to say, the summer of 02, that a friend of mine, who I talked about in the... GameCube pickup video or the GameCube video game collection live stream last week, um, who was completely opposed to the GameCube, unlike me, was like, I'm going to go and buy an Xbox because Nintendo is for little kids now and I don't want that. I'm going to go and buy the grown up console. So I'm going to go and buy an Xbox. And I was like, you can effing have it. I don't care. But he invited me and a couple of friends over for like, you know, a gaming night or whatever. And. I, don't th I didn't think we were going to play the Xbox. I thought we were going to play, like, PlayStation uh, 2 stuff or maybe some Dreamcast. But he ended up whipping out Halo. And I was like, oh, here we go. You now he's going to try to convert me. And we ended up playing Halo for hours and hours and hours and hours. And I was like, okay, I was wrong. I think I kind of need this console. This is one of the most amazing, like, multiplayer experiences I think I've ever had. And I made it my life's mission to round up some money so I can go and get me an Xbox. And I was deep in production of my first fan film. I was, you know, I put all this money aside for the fan film that I was going to make, which will remain nameless. Trailers of it can be seen on my channel. <laughs> um, and I didn't have money to spare, but I managed to still get an Xbox and one specific game that I still own in my collection right now. Uh, that was what made me really want to get it when I saw that that came out. What's up, Jason? How's it going? Corpse Flood in the house. Super Enabler Brothers. Anyway, so I ended up loving it. Absolutely loving it. And even back in the early 2000s when I had my Xbox originally, um, when it came to multiplats, I would only buy it for that console. Not that it was in HD because 
who knew what the hell HD was back in like 2002. Um, it was just because I thought the games always played better, uh, the frame rate was better, and I liked the controller on the Xbox. Not the Duke, the second variation a lot better. So, yeah. And I still love my Xbox to this day. Like I said, I've really taken a, a new interest in collecting for it lately. And you'll see why when I get into it. So, shall we begin? Alright, so, talked about this last Friday in the uh, uh, January Pickups live stream that I did. That's Everything or Nothing, 007, Everything or Nothing, my favorite James Bond game ever. Uh, this is... An original story, not based on any movie, but it is also the only video game uh, that took place during the area, the area, era, what is, it? is that even a word? The era of Pierce Brosnan, where he actually lent his voice and his face to a video game. Usually it was either his voice, and I think that was it usually, but this one has both. And it's actually a really fun third person action game with some vehicle levels and stuff like that. No first person shooting stuff. Uh, but it is fantastic. It has a great opening theme song, like from a Bond movie. It's the it has an original song that's great. I think it's by Mia, possibly. Yeah, Mia. And it's a lot of fun, and the story is pretty cool too. It's a it's a better Bond storyline than Die Another Day. I'll tell you that. Well, actually, better than all of them except for maybe Goldeneye, uh, at least the Pierce Brosnan ones. But I love this game. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. I should probably stack these that way so I can put them back on my shelf. Ah. I talked about this in my Xbox uh, Diamonds in the Rough video that I released like three years ago. God, it's been so long since I did those. I need to really get on, get my ass moving to bring those uh, videos back to life. Advent Rising. Uh, this was supposed to be like the Halo killer. You know, forget about that Halo thing. This is the one you want. It's a third-person action game that really steals a lot of what made Halo Halo. Uh, <laughs> the weapons... The aliens look, the aliens that you fight look like uh, the Flood, not the Flood, the um, the Covenant. And But the thing is, the story is really epic. You play as this pilot who uh, is like on the front lines when this alien invasion happens. I think he was on a space station or something and this alien invasion happens. And he ends up starting to develop like superpowers a little bit. And it's really, really cool. I love the music. The gameplay is fun. It's a little loose. But it's fantastic and the presentation is bar none. When I saw... Video Games Live, the video game music concert back in like 2007 or whatever it was. It was probably 2009. Um, Tommy Tallarico did the music for this game. He hosts the Video Games Live concerts, at least the first wave of them. And he introduced this because he composed the, the score to this. So he play, they played a really cool section of music from this game and it was great. Music is fantastic. So I played this one, but it's Air Force Delta Storm. This is a series that began... Or, I cannot talk. A big game. I wish this was a beer. Let's start again now, shall we? All right. This is a game that began on the Dreamcast, which is another thing that shocks the hell out of me is... Well, this is this is Konami. Okay, I'm thinking this is that other con franchise. Okay, never mind. Back on track. Uh, it's an Air Force... Well, like an airplane flight simulator dogfight game. I can never think of what genre that's considered. I always call it Wing Commander type games. Or Afterburner. Think of Afterburner, but more complicated. It's actually pretty fun. has a lot of really cool effects. And the heads-up heads up display is really, really cool. I really like the way it's displayed in this game. And the graphics are pretty fantastic. HD, baby! <laughs> Alias. License game. Duh. Uh, yeah, I really had a thing for this show when it first came out, and I thought it really crapped out toward the end, but the game is not half bad. It's a third-person action stealth game, kind of like, it's trying to be like a, a Splinter Cell game, and it's not nearly as good or well-made. But if you're a fan of the show, the storyline is actually kind of neat, so I can't really complain. But it is not the best, hang on a second, I'm going to fix something here. It is not the best game ever based on... A TV show. Definitely better than the Charlie's Angels game, though. <laughs> this one's pretty awesome. I've been playing this a lot lately, actually. Aliens vs. Predator Extinction. This is not a first-person shooter at all. This is a strategy game. Tactical strategy game. It's kind of like playing uh, Command & Conquer, but with aliens and Predator and Marines. 
and it's actually really fun. You get to pick one of the factions, and then you end up trying to fight them all, and it's fantastic. The graphics are kind of eh, but I don't care as long as it's fun to play, and it really, really is. I highly recommend this one. The reason I didn't buy this back when it first came out was because I found out that it was a strategy game, and I was not into that type of game back then. I am now. Uh, but I kind of uh, shot myself in the foot back then because I kind of wish I did buy it regardless of that because I probably would have become a fan of that genre by playing it. Talked about this in my Diamonds in the Rough also for the Xbox. American McGee presents Scrapland. Um, it's not a great game. It's a really cool game. Has a lot of really cool ideas. Mostly because American McGee is a goddamn genius. If you've ever played um, American McGee's Alice... His take on Alice in Wonderland came out for the PC only until you bought the sequel, Alice Returns, um, like the, th what was it, the 360 or the PS3, and it had the, it had a download code for the original game that they had adapted to the home consoles, which didn't control very well. Uh, but this one is like this futuristic game where you play, it's like, it takes place on Earth, but humans have been exiled because they're a-holes, and only like robots exist on the planet now, and it's kind of like a... It was like a murder mystery, if I remember the storyline. I haven't played this in so long. But it has some of the absolute worst dialogue and worst voice acting. And But the gameplay is really fun. Uh, the main character you play as can swap bodies with other robots in the area. And there's some um, flight simmy stuff. You fly around in like a drunk car or something like that at one point. But it's, it's actually really fun and really creative. The storyline is where it's at. That's where American McGee really shines in video games is his storylines. It's just the gameplay is not the greatest. But I recommend it also. Here's a fun one. I used to play this in the arcade. Arctic Thunder. It's uh, San Francisco Rush on a snowmobile. So it's an arcade -y racing game with hidden paths and crazy shenanigans going on and really crazy jumps and stunts. I love these games. Any of these Thunder games is right up my alley. Absolutely love that one. They still have that at the the uh, or they have the arcade cabinet of that at the uh, Buffalo Wild Wings by my work. Here's a real cool one, uh, Area 51. It's a first-person shooter. You would think that this would be like a light gun game, you know, because Area 51 was a light gun game in the arcades, and I did believe that came home to the home consoles. I think I never played it though. If it did. Whatever. But this is a reimagining of it. It's a first-person shooter. And David Duchovny is the voice of your main character in it. Uh, and Powers Booth. And Marilyn Manson is in it as this alien on the cover here. It's actually really fun. I like this one a lot. It didn't get a lot of love when it first came out. But I think it's a really fun game. I highly recommend that one. I don't know why this is still in my collection. I might get rid of it. Probably will. Army Men. Army Men. Sarge's War. I don't like these Army Men games. I think I got this for like a buck somewhere. I think I got this at that... Uh, Half Price Books Warehouse sale where it was, everything was a dollar. And the only reason I bought it was because it was one of the few games I found there that actually had a manual with it. So I picked it up. But this one is another third-person action game. I have not played it, but whatever. I'm actually going to set this one aside so I can think about if I want to keep it or not. <laughs> of all the games to double dip on. All right. So we got... Backyard Wrestling, don't try this at home, and Backyard Wrestling 2, there goes the neighborhood. Yes, I own a game that has freaking Juggalos in it. <laughs> so, I bought this at that $1 uh, Half Price Books Warehouse sale. I bought this there, and I really wanted to get the second game. The only thing was I only found the second game for the PlayStation 2. So I picked it up, and then I was just kind of like, after a while, like, do I really, why don't, just get it for the Xbox, so you can have the two matching, and they're both in HD, so why not? But it's a wrestling game, it's not the best wrestling game, it's like, if you were to take, like, one of the SmackDown games and dumb it down a little bit, but it's it's fun, you got some crazy moves you can do, because if you ever watched any of those backyard wrestling videos, they're actually pretty fun, I like them a lot. I used to have a DVD of the back, I think it was the first volume of the backyard wrestling stuff, and there was some of the weirdest, craziest shit I think I've ever seen in a, like in a wrestling video. The stuff that these kids were willing to do to themselves, it was insanity. Especially that new kid that's on Facebook, that Juggalo wrestler guy that keeps jumping on random things. Um, Batman Begins. It's a decent third-person stealth action game based on a what I think is a really awesome movie. Um, I don't have throat cancer. <laughs> um, it's decent. It 
is just really bland looking because everything is like brown and black and it's kind of like eh, can we have some color please well that didn't show up until the ones that are based on like cartoony stuff but it's actually a really fun game didn't get a lot of love if i remember correctly when it first came out but i enjoy it a lot here's one of the colorful ones uh batman vengeance dark tomorrow was the one i had for the gamecube okay Batman Vengeance, this one is an also, uh, this one's also a 3D, like, third-person action game, but this one is more based on the animated series than anything else, and it's actually pretty cool. I really like this one a lot. Got a lot, a lot of beat-em-up areas and stuff like that. It's pretty fun. Huh, this one's awesome. Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. I bought this long, long before Battlefield became, like, a thing. Uh, this was, I, I want to say the first one I came out on a home console. I don't ever remember seeing a the original battlefield if there was one but this is a first person military shooter and it was fantastic this was awesome and then i got black and i totally forgot that this game existed because this was like the coolest first person shooter next to halo and then black came out and i was like battlefield 2 what no that could go bye bye but it's still a pretty awesome game i like it a lot also showed this one off on friday in my january pickups battlestar galactica this was one of the games i was talking about in my playstation 2 uh, live stream, you know, my collection live stream that I was like, I would rather have this on the, the Xbox than the PlayStation 2. So went to the local retro video game store by me and they had this there. So I picked it up and it's another one of those Wing Commander style games and I love it a lot. Beyond Good and Evil. Um, embarrassed to say that I have not played this a whole lot. I know there was like a, a remaster of this that came out, I think digitally a while back and there was like a petition to make a sequel or maybe there is a sequel in the works i can't remember but all i remember was like it's a third person action adventure game and uh has to do with photography a little bit and an alien invasion but i only played it briefly to make sure that the disc worked and it did and i hadn't i haven't played it since so maybe i will end up streaming this on my twitch channel also talked about this on friday and my january pickups this is another one that I switched over from my PlayStation 2 version to the Xbox Black, just talking about it. <laughs> it's one of the best first-person shooters I think I've ever played. It is like a Michael Bay action movie in video game form. Everything that can explode does explode. And it is super fun. The storyline is pretty cool, too. It's all about a Black Ops team, first-person shooter stuff. It is amazing. Just always something going on. It is never boring for a second. I think I have both of these. Yep. Woo. Uh, we got Blinks, the Time Sweeper, and Blinks 2, Masters of Time and Space. These are kind of like trying to be like Ratchet and Clank or Jack and Daxter on the Xbox because these are original or these are exclusive to the OG Xbox. And they're okay. I mean, they're, they're fun. Don't get me wrong. They're fun. They're just not nearly as good as a Jack and Daxter or a Ratchet and Clank or even a... Um, Sly Cooper. But they're good. I like them a lot. They're fun. Could have been a little bit better, but at least the first one sold enough that we got a sequel. So how's everybody doing tonight, huh? Got a bunch of people watching. What is going on? Talk to me. Tell me something. Uh, this one's awesome. Blood Omen 2. I absolutely love the Legacy of Cain series. That's what it actually calls it up here. The Legacy of Cain series, Blood Omen 2. The original Blood Onum, Blood, Blood Onum, wow, my tongue is not working tonight. Uh, the original Blood Omen on the PS1 is one of my favorite games on that console. It's a top-down Legend of Zelda style action RPG, and this one switches it up. It's in the third person 3D, and it's pretty awesome. It's, I think, the second to the last game that ever got made in this series. I think it was this, and then Defiance came out, and that was where it ended, but... I absolutely love it. You're playing as a, a vampire. He sucks blood off, sucks the blood out of people from across the damn room. <laughs> it's, I think, yeah, they actually show it on the box. You can see him just sucking blood out of somebody from like, like five feet away. That is so awesome. And it, it happened like that in the PlayStation One version too. I absolutely love these games. I should probably stream the entire series from beginning to end since I have every single game in that series. Here's another one of my favorite franchises. We got Blood Rain and Blood Rain Two. So. I originally owned Blood Rain on the GameCube back in the day. I remember reading the reviews of, it was like the comparison between the GameCube versus the PlayStation 2 versus the Xbox, and I can't remember where I read it. It was online somewhere, and they said that the Xbox One was like the best version of it. 
It had the best frame rate and, you know, the graphics and everything. And I was just kind of like, okay. And it didn't bother me that it wasn't. <laughs> when I actually played it, I was just kind of like, no, this is not. I've, I've seen what the Xbox version looks like. It looks better than this. But I loved the game so much, I didn't want, like the first one, I didn't want it to end. Every day after I bought it, I would come home from work. I would play one level. And I would limit myself to one level a day just so I could space it out and have, you know, be able to play it for longer periods of time. And it worked out very well for me because I just absolutely could not wait to get out of work that day so I could play yet another level because I love the mechanics of it. You can slow down time and you can dodge bullets like in the Matrix and sucking blood out of somebody in like bullet time is super fun to see happen. The, the dialogue that comes out of this woman's mouth uh, there was a jaw dropper for me when I hitch a ride with a bunch of Nazis in the back of their Jeep. Like I was hiding in the back of their Jeep. They go to this castle. I needed to get there. So I hitched a ride in the back of the Jeep. When she jumps out of the Jeep, when they get there, she goes, thanks for the ride, fucko. And I was like, what? Did I just hear that in a video game? What just happened? The games are good, Jason. The movie, well, movies, yeah, there's three of them. Not so much. Even the the the... What was it? The Fat Blood Rain movie that they made. I can't remember what it was called. They shot Blood Rain 3 at the same time as like a parody version of it. And with the exact same actors except Blood Rain. The actress playing Blood Rain was swapped out with like a 300 pound woman. And I'm not kidding. Someone thought that was a good idea. Anyway. Absolutely loved the first one. Bought the second one and didn't like it nearly as much. It was a lot harder and the combos and like all the different moves you can unlock and all that. Just kind of like bogged it down as far as I was concerned. Because I like the simplicity of the first one. Not that it's a bad game, it's just, it gets really hard really fast, and I could not beat it. And then there's also, like, a third game that was released digitally on, I, I had it on the PlayStation 3, it was like a side-scrolling, hand-drawn, animated, uh, like, platformer beat-em-up. It was really cool, it was just, it wasn't what I wanted, I wanted another one like these, you know? Uh, Blood Wake, this one is like Twisted Metal on the Water, it's a vehicle combat game with boats. And it's pretty cool. It's an exclusive for the Xbox. I recommend it. It is really, really fun if you like vehicular combat games. The graphics are spectacular. They still look good. I have... I say this every freaking time. Five plugs. I can never remember what it's called. Is it composite or component? The one with the five plugs. When you hook it, this up through that, it looks amazing. And even with my line doubler, my uh, it looks pretty good too. Tim, what's up? Yeah, the Xbox is tur like slowly turning into like the my favorite console to collect for right now. It's... Within the space of a month, it's bumped up. I've bumped it up a lot just by going to, like, one retro game store. And it's going to go down again uh, tomorrow because tomorrow my bonus from work shows up and shit's going to be bought. So the February pickup live stream is going to be off the chain. Mark my words. There was one specific thing that was at the store the last time I went there in January. My eyes popped out of my head. And I was like, oh, I, I'm coming back when the bonus shows up because that's going to be mine. And it better still be there when I get there tomorrow. Anyway, BMX Triple X. You want to play Dave Mira with boobies? Well, this is the game for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there is naked women riding BMX bikes and doing tricks. And the funny thing is, out of all the consoles out there that got this, the one that's censored, from what I understand, is the PlayStation 2 version. The GameCube version has boobs in it, too, from what I understand. I don't understand why that's a thing or how that's a thing, but whatever. Boobies! Triangular boobies that look like Lara Croft, you know, but whatever. It's still in there. Here's another Xbox exclusive. It's called Breakdown. This is a first-person shooter, and if I remember correctly, it also... Yes, this has... First person beat em up stuff going on. So you'll have your fists out in front of the screen like you're in a shooter, a first person shooter, and you can beat the shit out of people. And it's really fun. You got like these superpowers where your fists light up and you can pummel somebody into oblivion. I love this game. It's fantastic. I like it a lot. Here's a decent one. Uh, Broken Sword, The Sleeping Dragon. This is an adventure style game. I remember on the PC, it was kind of like playing like a space quest or a king's quest type of game and now it's gone completely 3d and it's like playing an indiana jones style storyline if i remember right i played it for quite a while when it first showed up when i bought it 
And it's actually pretty fun. I like this one a lot. It's a long running series too. I don't think I wish they numbered them so I knew what order they went in. Yay for boobies! <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, here's a really cool one. Earned in Blood, brother. Or... Let's try that again. Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood. This is a first-person shooter World War II game, so it was trying to steal not only Medal of Honor's Thunder... It was also trying to steal Call of Duty's Thunder because Call of Duty, I think, had just come on the scene as well. And this was trying to be like the really edgy graphic one of them all. And it is pretty nasty, but it's really cool. It's got a fun, or not a fun storyline, but it's got a, an interesting storyline. Uh, it's been endorsed by the History Channel, no less. But yeah, for a first person World War II shooter, it's really, really good. And there's a sequel to that too. Which I don't think I have. That one's like Road 80, something, something, Road 80, or Hill 80, or something. Oh, this one I remember got so much shit when it first came out. I remember the local mall by my house. Um, there was a software, etc., in it. And the guy that I used to, he was like my hookup for games at this store. He would always like hold them for me when no one else would, would actively go out of his way to tell people not to buy this game. <laughs> it's. Bruce Lee, Quest of the Dragon, it's a 3D beat-em-up starring, you know, CG Bruce Lee. And back in the day, it got, I remember it got terrible reviews, everyone hated it, nobody wanted to buy it, it did not sell. But, nowadays I play it, and I think it's really fun. And it's not a bad game at all. It's a little wonky in certain areas, but I absolutely love it, and I do believe this is an exclusive. I don't remember seeing this for any other console out there. It's not. It's really fun. So here's the game that convinced me outside of Halo. Excuse me. But, uh, the Lacroix is giving me the burpees. Um, this is the game that convinced me that I needed to buy an Xbox aside from Halo. I already wanted it for Halo, but when I saw this come out, I was like, okay, now I need to have it like right now. And that is, you ready for this? Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Xbox exclusive. Um, when this first came out, I was a huge Buffy fan. Um, the show was still on the air, and I had not played any Buffy games. I knew there were Buffy games out there, but I knew that they were all terrible, like the one for the uh, Game Boy Advance and the one for the Game Boy Color. I remember seeing them at the stores and always passing them up because I remember they had like god awful reviews. But this one got really good reviews. And when I read that, I was like, oh shit, maybe it's time to uh, get on that Xbox train if this is the only way I can get this game. So I went out and I bought an Xbox, I bought Halo, and I bought Buffy the Vampire Slayer on day when I, when I decided to get it. I got them all on the same day. And it did not disappoint. It's a 3D beat-em-up when you're playing as Buffy. And it's, an old, it's its own original storyline. It takes place, I think, between season two and three. Um, and all the voice act or all the actors from the show, except for Sarah Michelle Geller, are in here reprising their roles. But the girl that is replacing Sarah Michelle Geller does a dynamite impression of her. I will say that. And the storyline and the uh, the combat is really fun. It can be a little frustrating when you get like uh, like surrounded, but it's really cool. I like this one a lot, and I recommended it to everybody that I knew, and everybody seemed to enjoy it as well. And then the sequel came out, which ended up becoming a multi-plat, which was available on every single console. And this one lets you play as not just Buffy, but a ton of other characters in the uh, universe, too. You can play as Faith, you can play as Xander, you can play as Willow, you can play as Spike. Uh, and in this one, I don't think anybody returned for the voice. Yeah, they don't say anything about it. It's all people impersonating them. Yep, no one came back. <laughs> So their likenesses are in here, but their voices are not. And it's pretty good, too. It's another 3D beat-em-up, and it's really fun. I remember loving playing as Spike, and you can actually unlock more characters to play as, and one of them is the uh, psychotic little uh, ventriloquist dummy <laughs> that was alive on the show. And it's pretty funny to see uh, him running around killing people, but I, I really like that game, too. But I do believe the best version of it is on the Xbox because HD 480, 480p. Love it. Where, how many of these do I have? I need to get the rest of them. I'm probably going to buy these tomorrow when I get the uh, the bonus. But I love this series. We got Burnout 2, Point of Impact, the Director's Cut, or Developer's Cut, sorry. 
and Burnout 3 Takedown. I need to get the original Burnout on the Xbox. And I will probably get uh, Revenge on the 360 if I can find it. But really awesome car racing games, but also has the, the awesome Crash Mode, which I absolutely love. Crash Mode is like a puzzle game with cars where you have to figure out the exact angle, speed, and car you need to hit in a traffic jam in order to cause as much collateral damage as possible. And you need to hit a certain monetary amount in damages to get to the next level. And it's just fun to try different ways to hit cars and slow down time and maybe slide into this bus and make that crash into five other cars and cause all kinds of crazy damage. It's a super fun series. And I wish it was still going. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, Burnout Paradise is fun, but I kind of wish we just had the, you know standard version of burnout still as a thing can you imagine what that would look like with modern day graphics that would be amazing with uh forza horizon 4 graphics i just gave myself a boner call of cthulhu dark corners of the earth it's a horror game in the first person lovecraftian stuff yeah favorite series ever i know it is awesome i love it um Bought this. Actually didn't have any interest in buying this back in the day because I remember when it was a thing. I bought this because Metal Jesus and Reggie were talking about horror games in a uh, Hidden Gems video of theirs. And they brought this one up. And luckily, I managed to... I think it was from the same time they talked about uh, Ghost Hunter. I talked about it in the PlayStation 2 videos. <laughs> didn't jump on Ghost Hunters fast enough, but I did manage to jump on this before the price jumped up. So... Um, it's fantastic. It's like, uh, let me see. It's kind of like playing, I don't know. I'm trying to, it's, it's, it's a first person shooter, but there's no real shooting. It's like exploration. It's like playing, um, it's like a Elder Scrolls game, I guess, but it's horror theme and it's fantastic. It is kind of amazing. It's Bethesda main before Bethesda was a thing, yo, they got to begin somewhere. Uh, we're just talking about this when I brought up that uh, Brothers in Arms, the original Call of Duty, Finest Hour, on the Xbox. It is a fantastic first-person shooter. I mean, everyone gives them shit nowadays because, you know, the game we get a new game in the series every year. But, I mean, they had to start somewhere, and it's really, really good. I still need to pick up Part 2 and 3. I think 3 is available. Three, 2 and 3 are available on the Xbox 360, so I'm probably going to go for that. But the original one, it's pretty awesome. But I love, I still love Call of Duty. I think the last one I actually bought was World War II, which I loved. But I never played for the online. I only played for the story mode. Oh, online can eat my asshole. Uh, this one I had to buy just because of where I'm from. <laughs> so I'm a little biased. But this is also an exclusive. It's Chicago Enforcer. It's a first person shooter like in 1920s, 30s Chicago with Tommy guns and stuff. It's awesome it's clunky and cheap looking but it's fun fun's the only reason i play games you know i don't give a crap if the graphics are bad if it plays well i mean if it was if games weren't if i was caring about what the graphics look like i would never play anything on the atari 2600 i just wouldn't because they look like shit but they're fun so i still play them just like this okay so this they lied <laughs> when this came out i got duped not that I'm sad. I mean, it's still awesome that I own this, but Conquer Live and Reloaded. Um, this is an upgraded version of Conquer's Bad Fur Day on the N64 because Microsoft, right before I think the Xbox came out, bought Rare and decided to start turning all of their IPs into games for the Xbox exclusive games. So they now own Conquer and they decided to re release Conquer's Bad Fur Day on the Xbox better graphics and all that but the thing is it's slightly censored like whenever somebody drops an f-bomb it's bleeped out i remember on the n64 card i don't think it was bleeped out i think you could hear every f-bomb every swear word certain swear words are bleeped out um some of the blood i think was censored or something like that certain things got censored i can't remember exactly what it's been a while but playing it in hd is great musty hobbit was just streaming this version of the game on his twitch channel and it looked fantastic when played through an xbox one uh but it's a uh, collectathon third person platformer kind of like mario 64 but with this foul mouth little squirrel and it's i think it's still a great game multiplayer is actually still pretty fun with this but yeah the rare replay i'm not sure i haven't played it i have rare replay 
but I haven't played Conker's Bad Fur Day yet. I was playing like the arcade games that we never like the Battletoads arcade game mostly on that one, and some of the uh, Spectrum was it the ZX Spectrum games that we never got over here. Uh, but that's a good idea. I should probably find out if it is uh, censored or not. But yeah, this was slightly censored. It was disappointing because when I did play that back in the day when I ran out to EB Games and bought a copy of it because I was like, yay, I can play a new version of it, yay! Because I did not have a Nintendo 64 at that point in time. I had sold it. Uh, and I was really disappointed when I, like, they're bleeping everything out. I was like, really? Really? We're all adults here. This is rated M, right? It should be in there, but whatevs. That was such an... I mean, that was... When that came out, that was when I said, I'm going to go get an Xbox One. That was... That was the deciding factor for me. Because Rare is my favorite game developer ever. And being able to play, like, not only the games that we never got over here that were only available in England for the micro PCs, like the ZX Spectrum and all that, but we never got the Battletoads, the arcade game, a port to any console. Uh, plus, I could play games that I didn't own at that point in time, like Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I still don't own it for the Nintendo 64. But anyway, Counter-Strike. <laughs> this is, I think, a spinoff of Half-Life or something. And I know people are still playing Counter-Strike on the PCs. Like, it's still a thing. It's a first-person squad shooter. And honestly, I have not put a whole lot of time into it, but I, I know people that are still playing this. So, yay. But... I had to have it just because Valve, you know, whatevs. So this is a weird one. So we've got Crimson Sea. Pick this up at the old retro game store in Chicago that I used to go to all the time. That was uh, People Play Games. They're gone now. I'm saddened immensely by it. I wish they were still around. Um, but I picked this up because exclusive on the Xbox and it's a sci-fi RPG. And I absolutely wanted to play a sci-fi RPG. Never did though. But here's the weird part of it is. The second game that came out for the series is, is an exclusive for the PlayStation 2. Why? But whatever. Uh, the little bit of it I, that I played, the graphics are absolutely fantastic. The storyline is very cool. And I like the battle system, so it's a winner. Still have no excuse why I haven't played it. Well, yeah, I do have an excuse why I haven't played it. It's an RPG, and I don't have time to devote to something like that. But I am... Like Jason from Corpse Flood Gaming knows, this is the year I'm devoting to RPGs. Once I beat... Uh, Spider-Man, I'm currently playing Spider-Man on the PS4, and then I'm going to play the Terminator game that came out for the uh, current gen consoles. Once I've played through those two, it's RPGs from this point on. I mean, I'm going to play little games in between, but I need to start knocking some of these RPGs off of my uh, need-to-play list. My backlog, as it were. This one, I think everybody who collects has in their, their uh, collection. I mean, Crimson Skies, High Road to Revenge... It's a Wing Commander-esque game, but it's like a flight sim, flight combat RPG. It's based on a tabletop RPG, if I remember correctly. I know that there's like Hero Clicks things for this out there, but it's fantastic. And I know this is uh, uh, Drunken Master Paul, you know, Metal Jesus' buddy. This is his favorite game of all time. And back in the day, I thought this was absolutely fantastic, and I still do. It still holds up. It's immensely fun. Great combat. And it looks great when played HD. I need to pop this into my Xbox One and see how it looks through that. That would be... That's crazy. Um, but there was even DLC for this back in the day. It was free. I think there was extra planes you could buy and stuff like that. And for the uh, online... The uh, multiplayer component. But I love it. I, I need to play it again. This is also on my Xbox Diamonds in the Rough uh, video that I did a couple years back. Dark Watch. Whoo, boy. First person horror western. Yes, sir. Bought this on day one when it came out, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, you play as, like, this undead cowboy who... Uh, there's vampires you need to kill, and demons, and succubi, succubi, and all this other kind of crazy shit. It's like, it's like playing a Blade game in the Wild West. It's absolutely phenomenal. I love this game, and it still holds up. I was actually playing this... Maybe two or three months ago. Actually, it's probably more... Probably around September. And I was still having a, a ball playing it. It still holds up. Nobody, like, talks about this damn game. And they should. It's awesome. It's one of my favorites on the console. It was one of my favorites back then. It's still one of my favorites now. Yeah, Matt, Dark Watch is amazing. And welcome to the stream. Oh, yeah, I never said welcome to the stream, Davis. Sorry about that. Battletoads Arcade. 
is awesome. You are correct. And they actually, I live down the street from a barcade and they actually have the arcade cabinet in there and it is amazing to play in person. It is one of my favorite X. Ex- yeah, Crimson Skies is fantastic. Dark Watch is definitely worth it. Oh, you can see how much I paid for this at Goodwill. Well, I was talking about BMX Triple X being Dave Mira with boobies. Well, then there's Dave Mira Freestyle BMX 2. So this is basically a Tony Hawk game on BMX bikes. And it's not a bad thing, but I got this at a Goodwill for $4.99. I should probably try to get that sticker off. This thing was covered in stickers when I got it. Uh, but, yeah, I enjoy Toy- Tony Hawk, so why not one where it's bicycles swapped out for the, mo- the uh, skateboards? Why not? And I got it cheap, so there you go. Panzer Dragoon Orda is the shit, yo. I love it. I absolutely love it. So I need to get the big box for this. Don't drop on my head, please. Thank you very much. Okay. So, next up is the Dead or Alive Ultimate Double Pack. As you can see, there are no games in here, but this opens up because it has remasters of Dead or Alive 1 and 2 that have been tweaked for the Xbox. That's why it's called the Ultimate Versions. Double Disc Collector's Edition. And the games are right here. And being that... Dead or Alive 1, I thought was better than Tekken back in the day. I probably told the story about that in the um, PlayStation 1 live streams, but when Dead or Alive first came out, I was like super interested in it because I think I had seen... I played it maybe in a demo somewhere, and I really, really liked what I played. So I went to this... I was I was going to see a movie, I think, and I was meeting some friends like in this theater. It was at this theater that was way out of my way. But I knew that there was a, was it an EB Games? It wasn't a GameStop, I don't think. It might have been a GameStop at that point. I think it was. So I went to this out-of-the-way GameStop because I knew it was there and I wanted to get Dead or Alive. So I walk into the store and I'm like, the clerk's like, can I help you? I said, yeah, can I get a copy of Dead or Alive on the PS1? And he said, okay, kind of like with an attitude. And he goes, you do realize that Tekken 2 just came out as well. And I go, yeah, I know. I'm not a big fan of Tekken. I really wasn't. I didn't like Tekken. I didn't like the technical fighting aspect of it. And he goes, yeah, Tekken 2's out. I'm like, yeah, I'm not really a big fan of Tekken. And he just looks me dead in the eye and goes, it's better than this crap. (laughs) And I go, do you want my money or not? I was like, just ring up the damn game. And he goes, and he rings it up and thank you. Have a nice day. Come back soon. I was like, no, I will not. Uh, But yeah, I do still enjoy... Dead or Alive more than a Tekken game. I still don't own a whole lot of Tekken games in my collection because, no. Although, Tekken 3 is pretty fun. Uh, I will say that because Eddie Gordo is awesome. Boobies! Yeah, you want to talk about... Oh, man, you should... (laughs) The PlayStation version of Dead or Alive? Those boobs defied gravity. They, like... They do the wave when you move. It is... Oh, Jesus. They fixed that in this. They remastered them. It looks like a modern, like like when this was a modern thing. It looks like a modern day fighting game. They are great. I think they still hold up. They are fantastic games. And this stack is going to land on my goddamn head if I'm not careful. Uh, no, that's the wrong stack. Okay. Speaking of Dead or Alive 1 and 2, there's always Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. Ha <laughs> ha boobies. And you can also see where I got this and how much I got it for. So... I got the I got this sort of softcore porn game at a Goodwill. Murka. <laughs> Everyone complained about this game when it first came out um, because it's kind of not really much of a game. It's kind of like a friendship simulator, and there's some like mini games like you can play volleyball. You can do this like let's hop across these floating things in the pool and try to get to the other side. And I can't remember, there's like, there's like three or four, does it even say on here what they are? It shows the one, oh, you can go into the, you can gamble in the casino too. Uh, but it was all about TNA. That's really all it is. It's, it's girls in bikinis. You can buy bikinis. You can gift bikinis to other characters and stuff like that. So you can see what they look like in them and stuff. It is kind of creepy, but there's two sequels to this. <laughs> one of them came out for the modern J or modern day com- or consoles. I have it for the PlayStation, uh, what is it, yeah, for the PlayStation 4. What's it, Paradise, I think it's called? Dead or Alive Paradise or something? Uh, but it's fun. But one of the coolest things about this game was because the Xbox had its own hard drive built into it, you could rip songs to the hard drive off CDs. 
And if you had a bunch of songs on the hard drive, you could use the game to play them. So there were songs like built into the game already, but you can replace them with the songs you have on the hard drive. So basically when I was playing this game, I was listening to KMFDM, Frontline Assembly, <laughs> Static X, <laughs> you know, like all the industrial style bands that I liked back then. And it was pretty cool to be able to do that. So that's one of the reasons why I like the game as much as I do. Other than boobies. Boobs. And uh, we have Dead to Rights and Dead to Rights 2. These are third person action run and gun sort of type games. Uh, except in part two, you got a pupper. You got a doggy. And I could have sworn that the first game was an exclusive for the console. Because I remember Dead to Rights 2 came out for like everything. But I could have sworn that this one was exclusive to the Xbox, but I think I'm wrong. But they are not the best, although, wow, I forgot that there was a strip club in this game. Is the game in the second, the first one too? Yeah, it is! I totally forgot that the dog was in the first one. Um, Def Jam, Fight for New York. I absolutely love this game. The first game, Vendetta, I have for the PlayStation 2. I think I need to try to find a copy of it for this. Um... It's a wrestling game, and I'm not a wrestling fan at all. You're rocking to some Judas Priest, Morbid Angel, and Death. Yeah. <laughs> Waifu, bro. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, I'm not a wrestling fan, and I'm not a rap fan at all. But you put those two things together, and you get something as amazing as these games. Um, it, I could not get enough of them. I don't know why. Like, the first game, Vendetta... I played that game with every character that there was. I absolutely loved it. And even more here. So, like, the... And it's baffling the amount of hip-hop people that are in here. Some of them I didn't even know who the hell they were. But we got, like, Bone Crusher, Bubba Sparks, Busta Rhymes, Carmen Electra. What? Crazy Legs. Danny freaking Treo. Danny Treo. Come on. Machete? Come on, man. Uh, let me see. Um, Elephant Man. Don't know who the hell that is. Uh, Fat Joe. Flay the Flav, Ghostface Killer, Henry Rollins. Henry Rollins is in a video game and I'm holding it in my hand. How flippin' awesome is that? Ice T, Lil Kim, Ludacris, Method Man, Omar Epps. Omar freaking Epps, really? Prodigy, Red Man, Scarface, Sean Paul, Snoop Dogg, Sticky Fingers, Exhibit. I mean, come on, that's nuts. I wonder how much money they had to pay these guys and gals to get their likenesses and them to do the voices for these characters in this game that's insanity i love it absolutely love it who thought that those games would have been as awesome as they were i can't get into rest i couldn't back then i can kind of do it now uh but back then i didn't but these were the only ones i was playing were the uh, the def jam games i thought they were fantastic we've got Destroy All Humans and Destroy All Humans 2. These are third-person action shmups. Not shmups, uh, running guns, uh, where you're just basically killing people left and right. <laughs> One giant step on mankind. Um, I haven't spent a whole lot of time playing them. I never had these back in the day. But I really enjoy this type of game, so that's why I picked them up. And when I tested... Was it this one? Yes, when I tested this one, because I, I found this one absolutely, actually not too long ago. Uh, when I found it, I tried it out with my retro tink and it looked fantastic i gotta see how many of these games actually work on my xbox one henry rollins man i mean carmen electra shit what yeah i need to spend uh, some time playing through those hey hey i have the first one on the playstation 2 and i have the second one on the xbox and it's deus x invisible war cyberpunk action rpg in the first person so Yes, please. I love cyberpunk. It's one of my favorite genres of anything. Uh, so this is right on my alley. But like I said, don't have time for RPGs. But maybe I'm going to put that on my list for this year. Play through all the Deus Ex games. I have, I think, at least a version of every one of the ones that have come out for the consoles. So I have no excuse. Um, Dino Crisis 3. This was, I think, an Xbox exclusive. Although it doesn't say it up here. It probably should. Uh, not the best game in the series. <laughs> this is like, I don't know. The first two games were like Resident Evil. Uh, and it took place like on Earth. <laughs> and it, it was good. They were good. And then there's like this one, which all of a sudden it goes like all sci-fi. And there's like robot dinosaurs and stuff. It is like, who thought this was gonna, it feels kind of like 
they had a separate game that just so happened to have robot dinosaurs in it, and they're like, you know what, maybe we should slap the Dino Crisis license on it to sell some copies. Because it doesn't really feel like it's connected to me. But, yeah, it's, it's I, I agree, Matt, it was kind of a mistake. <laughs> uh, this is awesome, though. I have the limited collector's edition of Doom 3 on the Xbox. Comes in this really awesome slipcase with a uh, steel book that is literally super freaking heavy. Oh, I still got two weeks or two months of Xbox Live if I want it. Got to run on that one. Um, but it's fantastic. Everyone gives Doom 3 a lot of crap because they kind of changed the way it played. Well, you got to grow with the times. You can't always be a pixely, you know, OG Doom type game. You got to upgrade things sometimes. And I thought it was a great version of, of, of a classic shooter. They upgraded it very well. And then there's the add-on because there was no real DLC, like, was it like uh side missions and stuff back then you could download like some clothes for a character or maybe a new ship or something somebody can play as but it was not like well there was the maps for halo too so maybe I, I'm, I'm wrong about that too there were those extra maps for halo too you can download but i guess this would have been way too big because it's almost its own fucking game so even more doom 3 awesomeness doom 2016 is amazing absolutely love that game what else do I got here? Doom three on the three sixty. Yeah, I have it for the three. I have it for the PlayStation uh, three, also, and that was because it came with the original versions of Doom that I think are as close to the PC versions as you're gonna get without owning them on the PC. Yeah, Doom three I liked. Doom three was cool. I just I'm like I'm just talking about how everyone was like that's not Doom when it came out. I was like, uh, yeah, it's not Doom because we're not playing it on a PC anymore. We're playing like a real game now. You know on different hardware yeah it's got to get upgraded somehow but yeah doom 2016 is way better <laughs> you're not going to get any argument for me on that front driver parallel lines got this at that uh half price books warehouse sale for a buck where i told everybody that i had like a shopping cart and i must have had at least 30 to 40 games stacked up in this shopping cart that i bought there i spent 40 bucks and got like 40 games it was kind of crazy this was one of them uh, i still haven't played it but i did play the original driver and it was fantastic, especially for the uh, director's mode where you can, like, make an action. Like, you can play a level and then, like, change camera angles and make, like, a little movie out of it. That was really cool. I don't think they do it anymore in this. But whatever. It's, it is that. This was one of my favorites back in the day. And, uh, actually, I had a birthday party maybe five years ago. And this is the game we all sat around and played. Uh, for old time's sake, because we used to do this shit uh, all the time. Dungeons and Dragons Heroes. This is one of my favorite multiplayer games. It's a dungeon crawler, kind of like uh, Baldur's Gate, one of those types of games. But it's in the Dungeons and Dragons universe. But it, you wouldn't know any better. It, it's basically Gauntlet <laughs> for the modern, uh, this modern age. You know, when this came out, two thousand and was it four? I want to say yeah, two thousand three. And it was fantastic. Playing this with all my friends, like four, four of us playing at the same time was fantastic. The graphics are great. The music's great. The levels are laid out really well. The spells, everything you can loot-wise find in it is absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love this game. And you can only play it on the Xbox. Uh, so, my ex-girlfriend uh, used was in a burlesque show. And I got roped into being the sound guy. Uh, I was doing, I was running the soundboard for this burlesque show for about a year. And I want to say it was like the second month of doing it. Like right after I got roped into being the sound guy, um, is when I got back into collecting because I was going to start getting paid to do it, you know, that burlesque show as well. So I was like, Oh, I got some extra money. I can use that toward, I was like for a while I was just spending the money that I was getting from the burlesque show to, to spend on games. So I won't have to, you know, spend my paycheck. And two guys that there was the a photographer that the woman that ran the burlesque show would hire to take pictures of every show. Um, I think his name is yeah Jeff. He like the second month of me doing the show, I showed up to set up everything, and he like drops a an Xbox 360 box at my feet, and he goes, "Here you go." I'm like, "What's this?" And he goes, well, I've been seeing like your Facebook and your Instagram posts about your collecting, like the games you're buying all the time. And he goes, I don't need these anymore. You can have them. He goes, I don't have a way to play them. Take them. They're yours. 
And it was a box absolutely crammed with Xbox games, original Xbox games. There must have been at least... I took a picture of it. It might be on my Facebook somewhere. But there was like 25 games in there. And one of them was Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind Game of the Year Edition. Actually, it was the uh, game... The uh, favorites. What was it called? The Xbox Best Hits or Greatest Hits version. Uh, I had to repurchase this when I found it. But he gave me the Greatest Hits version of it. That's why I wanted to bring it up. And there was tons of stuff in there, but... I have never played <laughs> this game for more than a half an hour. Uh, I it, it was, like, way too daunting for me at the time. Like, nowadays I could probably play it without a problem. But back then, when it first came out, I was just kind of like, what am I doing? I don't understand. Uh, but I have played Skyrim a lot, so I'm used to it now. So I plan to go through this and Oblivion as well at some point, just because. But that was one of the games I got from Jeff. A lot of the games I ended up selling because I had there were duplicates. Like I got I got I got Beyond Good and Evil from him, also. And a lot of the games that you saw in my PlayStation 2, I didn't bring it up during my PlayStation 2. I totally flaked on that. In the PlayStation 2 live stream, um, one of the bartenders, one of the guys who was the co-owner of the bar where the burlesque show took place, would always show me once he found out that I was a big gamer. Like, he brought, like, this binder where he had, like, all these RPGs. He's a huge RPG fan, and he had these binders full of RPGs for the OG PlayStation. He was trying to show them to me. And then eventually he just handed over a bunch of games to me that he didn't want anymore for the PlayStation 2. He gave me Baldur's Gate 2, which at that point in time in 2000, what was that, 2013-ish, was still going for, like, almost 100 bucks. He just gave it to me because why not? He gave me, like, three games. He gave me Toe Jam and Earl. Oh, I just spoiled something. <laughs> Hang on a second. Did he give me? Oh, no, he gave it to me for the Xbox. So I just spoiled two things. Shit. <laughs> anyway, back to the games. Um, Enclave. I talked about this in my Diamonds in the Rough for the Xbox. And I forgot that everybody was giving me the Dreamcast stuff. It wasn't PlayStation 2. Everything was Dreamcast. Oh, shit. Anyway, um, it's a third-person action RPG that's actually really fun. Yeah, the graphics aren't the greatest. Uh, some of the voice acting is kind of craptastic, but... For what it's worth, it's actually a very well put together like action RPG game, and I liked it a lot. It is super fun. I highly recommend it. If you want to find out more about it, watch my uh, Diamonds in the Rough video for the Xbox. Everybody gave this game shit when it first came out, but I didn't care. I wanted to play it so bad, and for me, it did not disappoint. Don't hate me for buying and liking this game. I still like it. Thank you very much. Enter the Matrix. I'm a huge Matrix fan. I, I like the sequels. I like them just fine. Uh, honestly, if you were young and you saw the Matrix Reloaded and you didn't like it, watch it again as an adult. I'm pretty sure you will like it now because it's not really as deep as everyone makes it out to be. Anyway, this was made co uh, alongside Matrix and or Matrix Reloaded and Matrix Revolutions. So technically, they were shooting two and a half movies at the same time because they shot footage specifically for this game with um jada pinkett and i can't remember the actor's name the guy played ghost and you know keena reeves making it makes an appearance uh carrie ann moss makes an appearance i think Lawrence fishburne's in it at some point hugo weaving's in a lot of it um and it's like a side story as to to go alongside what's happening in matrix reloaded and i absolutely loved it yeah it was a little clunky but every game's a little clunky in some way i don't know a perfect absolute perfect game i absolutely loved it i just wanted more lore of this universe because i love the matrix films so this was right up my alley. And the funny thing is, so this came out in 2003, right? Yeah, that was when Reloaded came out. Yeah, 2003. This game outputs in 1080i. Was that even a thing in 2003? I don't think so. But it does. And if you play this on an Xbox that is hooked up through the 5 cable thing, uh, or an upscaler, it looks like a almost like a brand new game, like a modern day game. It's insane that they had the foresight to do something like that. Because this, this was shot on, all the footage was shot on film. That's crazy. Um, and I was playing this not too long ago while I had it hooked up through, you know, for my HDTV. And it looked great. And it's still kind of fun. Like I said, it's still clunky. It's a little loose. But I I love it. I don't really like the other one, though. But this one is good. <laughs> I, still, I, I still think it holds up. Don't hate me. Yeah, I haven't spent a lot... I mean, I've only played Skyrim. I haven't beaten Skyrim. I've played a lot of Skyrim, but I haven't beaten it. But I like it. 
But everyone says either Morrowind or Oblivion are probably some of the best ones. Skyrim I need to get in VR because I think if I'm going to actually play through all of Skyrim, it should probably be in VR. Anyway, Evil Dead, Fistful of Boomstick. Um, I have... Uh, what's it called? Evil Dead, Hail of the King. I have that on the Dreamcast. Uh, this is the second game, Fistful of Boomstick. And the third game I have for the uh, PlayStation 2, and that is Regeneration. And I need to see if that's available on the Xbox, because then I'll get rid of my PlayStation 2 version. Uh, but third-person action game, and it's like a beat-em-up where you're playing as Ash. Bruce Campbell is playing himself, or playing Ash again, and it's awesome. Absolutely Love these games as clunky and badly made as they can be sometimes. Just playing... I'm, I'm playing an Evil Dead game, and that still boggles my mind. Like, somebody thought that was a good idea, and it turned out that, yeah, it was. I absolutely love these games. The fact that there's three of them, no less. Three of them! Oh. Evil Dead's one of... Or, Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness are probably two of my favorite movies. Do I have the other one? No. Uh, here is, uh, Peter Molyneux's F.U. to everybody, and that's Fable. Um, I did not get caught up in the hype at all. I know that people were, like, talking about that whole acorn situation where, I guess Molyneux, speaking out of his ass at some convention, said, oh, you can plant an acorn at the beginning of the game, and by the end of the game, it'll have grown into a full-size tree. It all, everything progresses, you know, like it would in reality, because I guess you're playing as, like, you start off as a kid and you grow into an adult. And you're going to see that time passage or whatever. And it turns out that was not even a thing. He, like, made up stories about how the game was going to play. The Xbox couldn't even handle half the stuff he was talking about doing. Uh, but I never got caught up into that. I didn't find out about that stuff until maybe five years ago through a video that uh, Guru Larry made on his channel. And that was kind of funny. <laughs> but I was like, I didn't care. Uh, but I never played this back in the day. I didn't actually play it until probably 2013. This is one of the games that I got from uh, Jeff in that box that he gave me. And um, it's okay. I mean, it's a, it's an action RPG. It's it's all right. Chicken Chaser. <laughs> There's two sequels to it where he still, I guess Molyneux still didn't deliver all the shit that he was talking about. Yeah, F Peter Molyneux. <laughs> Oh, he got his, man. He's like he's like on the outs, man. He can't even fix a game to... Or he, well, he has like a game that he's been trying to get kick-started, and it's supposed to be like a mobile game that's like building... It's kind of, kind of like Populous, I guess, and it's still not even out of beta, and it's been like three or four years or something like that. That guy's... He, he dug his own hole. He did it to himself. But anyway, this I did not know what it was connected to until long after the fact. <laughs> uh fallout brotherhood of steel i did not know what fallout was when this first came out but i picked it up because it's a dungeon crawler and it's like a post-apocalyptic one at that uh but i didn't know what the hell fallout was i did not know that there was a fallout one and two available for the pc and they were like isometric rpgs action rpgs now uh, this came out long before fallout 3 did so i just bought it on the merits that it was a dungeon crawler and i love dungeon crawlers and now that i own this i found this at a local store I want to say probably in 2014 or whatever for like five bucks. And yeah, I was like, oh my God, this is a Fallout spinoff. That's fantastic. And it's actually a pretty fun game. I like it a lot. Found this not too long ago. I got this at a half price books. Fatal Frame, the original Fatal Frame, uh, based on a true story, my butthole, whatever. But it's a, a horror game and the whole mechanic behind it is there's you're like in a haunted house and in order to capture the ghosts, you have to take pictures of them. Um, I have not played this yet. I want to wait until I get all three games and I can play them in a row. I have part three on the PlayStation 2. I think it's exclusive for the PlayStation 2. This one came out for both consoles, and I can't remember what part two is available on. Excuse me. But I need to find out. Morrowind was a lot more challenging. Oh, okay, so why do I do this to myself? Because I love licensed games, that's why. Uh, <laughs> I got this for a couple bucks. Fight Club. Um, it's a one-on-one -on -one fighter beat-em-up type game, and it's not good, like, at all, but I love the movie that it's based on, so I kind of wanted to have it because I love the movie so much, even though the game is poop, but whatever, I have it. Shut up. <laughs> Don't judge me. Here's the uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 that I was talking about. This version of it was going for probably almost $100 back in like 2013. And I was like, I had this back in the day when it first came out. And then I sold it. 
And then when I got back into collecting in 2013, I was like, yeah, that's going to take some doing to get that back in my collection. And then I get it for free. Like, uh, what was his name? I can't, uh, it's been so long, but whatever. He just like, uh, he took me down into the basement where like the, the setup for the burlesque show was. And he was like, here's my binder. Oh, and by the way, I don't want these games anymore. You can have them. And he gave me this and I'm not say a uh, really awesome dungeon crawler. Super fun. I never played this one multiplayer, even though you can only do it with two players. But I only played these games single player, but I didn't care. They were super fun. I still need to get the first game, Dark Alliance 1. Yes. Here's a Forgotten Realms Demon Stone. Uh, Forgotten Realms, I think, is a part of Dungeons & Dragons. It's like a spinoff, but this is another dungeon crawler, and it's pretty fun. Here's one that is super expensive for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it was a late release. What year did this come out? 2003 the xbox was still a thing back then why is it so expensive then i don't know but i found someone slipping on amazon and it was complete and i said sure i'll take it while i can it turns out the only thing that's wrong with it it has a a, a video game store sticker on the disc but i don't care it plays just fine and that is futurama why is this game so expensive i do not know but then again then again wasn't simpsons hit and run like super expensive for a little while too for some reason it was in really high demand but I love Futurama. I think it's better than The Simpsons. I wish it has not ended. I wish it didn't end. I wish it never ended. Simpsons is going to be on until the end of time. Why can't Futurama? Anyway, uh, it's a 3D third-person action game. And it looks just like the cartoon in 3D. It is awesome. Everything that I love about Futurama is in there somewhere. So I can't complain. I love it. I think it's a fantastic game. And not maybe not worth like the $80 that people were asking for it at the time. But like I said, I found someone slipping on Amazon, so I bought it. Got this from Jeffrey at the uh, Burlesque Show also. Fusion Frenzy. I think this was a launch game for the Xbox, but it's like a bunch of mini games and stuff where, like, yeah, you're like in, like, a big hamster ball and you're bashing other people with it. I still haven't played it, but, eh. I mean, it was free. I can't complain. Genma Onimusha. This is a... Re like I'm not a is it really considered a remaster? It's like a reworked version of the original Onimusha. Like everything is moved around. Uh, so I will say the graphics are much improved on this version because HD. Uh, but it's a Resident Evil game with samurai, and it's fantastic. I love the original. I love all three. Well, there's four of them, aren't there? God damn. Uh, I picked this up for a couple bucks and I still haven't played it. But it's a 3D beat 'em up. It's Gladiator Swords of Vengeance or Sword of Vengeance. It's okay. It's just a 3D beat em up with gladiators. It's alright. This is awesome though. I think I had this for the GameCube back in the day, but when I found out there was an Xbox version when I was back when I got back into collecting, I was like, that needs to be mine. That's Godzilla Destroy All Monsters. Hells yeah. It's a beat em up with Kaiju. And I love Godzilla. I love all that stuff. So being able to play as Godzilla or Space Godzilla or Ghidorah. <laughs> Or, uh, yeah, Mothra, all that shit. Oh, God, what was the name? Orda was the guy from Godzilla 2000. I think it was Orda. Uh, yeah, it's just awesome to be able to beat up other kaiju, throw them into buildings and stuff. It's amazing. I love these games. There's a, there's like three or four of them, I think, for the, the home consoles. So I think this was the first game released by Rare once Microsoft purchased them. And it's not good. I mean, it's not great. It's not gr It's not bad. It's not good, though. It's not something you would expect from Rare, because I used to like everything Rare put out, and that's grabbed by the ghoulies. It's a 3D, like, adventure game, and it's just not really well made, I guess is the biggest issue I have with it. It feels like it was rushed. It's like it was some half-assed idea that wasn't thought all the way through, and let's just crap it out as a video game. And it's just like, it's not cool ideas, but I don't think it's like the best game that they have ever made. It's... I found that for like $2.50 at a local store. Um, I need the box for this one. I think that's the only other one I have for the original Xbox up here. So we've got the Rockstar Games double pack of Grand Theft Auto. And this has Grand Theft Auto 3 and Grand Theft Auto Vice City on it. And it has this, it's a, the original artwork for the games. In this shiny new package put this back don't drop on me please that would be awful there we go um and the game's right here and they don't this one doesn't have the normal um artwork on it 
But for some reason, the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas... Oh, where... There you go. I was wondering why. San Andreas, you don't belong here. Get out of here, you freeloader. Vice City, they have this weird artwork just to, to signify that you're... It belongs in that collection up there. But, um... Grand Theft Auto 3 got a big visual upgrade being transported over to the Xbox for some reason. I thought it looked way better. And same with Vice City. It doesn't look nearly as good of an upgrade as this because this was newer when this came out. So, um, yeah, I played more Vice City than the original, well, Grand Theft Auto 3. But Grand Theft Auto 3, I remember I was really excited because I could finally enjoy these games because I did not like the first two because of the point of view that the game is played in. Like, it's that top-down car racing shit and it plays and looks like crap finally they were like for in the third person behind the car behind your character and it's so much better but vice city is the one that i really like because of the 80s theme that it has i thought that was absolutely brilliant and then there's the third one which is san andreas which is kind of like more gangbanger-esque stuff i had not played a lot of this one but i've played a lot of these two so there's that so now i can put these back in the order i had them before i got confused about what belonged to what this i thought was funny i found this at a local store i did not know it existed but i had to get it because licensed games the great escape i was talking about in what was it friday uh when i was doing my live stream about my december my january pickups i talked about a game that i bought you'll see it next week uh in the uh live stream for the xbox it's called prisoner of war and it's like an escape from auschwitz type game and I said, it reminded me a lot of the Great Escape video game. Well, here's the Great Escape video game, everybody. And it's actually not too bad. It's based on that Steve McQueen movie from the, was it the 60s? I want to say. I don't think it has the date on here, or the year that that came out. 2003, 2003. Yeah, it doesn't really say what year the movie came out. That would be awesome if it did, though. Anyway, to think that a game, or a, a game based on a movie that came out like 30 years prior... <coughs> would end up being really fun. I think this is actually pretty decent. It's not bad at all. And here's a really awesome one. I'm not a Western fan, but Gun just did it for me. I think I need to get rid of this and get it for the 360 instead. <laughs> but this is the one that I had back in the day when it first came out. I played the shit out of this. It's like pre-Red Dead Redemption. You're playing as a character that's voiced by Thomas Jane. And it's like all about, it's like a, a revenge storyline in the West. And it's awesome. It's fantastic. It's by Neversoft, the people that made uh, Tony Hawk. <laughs> it's great. Same people that I think made, uh... no, that's Insomniac that made the stuff, Spider-Man game. I'm talking out my ass right now. Anyway, awesome game. Like I said, I'm going to put that one aside because I think it's available for the 360. I need to check on that. This one I got for a buck. It's a uh, gunmetal from mech to jet and back. It looks like a budget title, but it's like you're playing as a transformer. You can transform from a robot to a jet, and it's kind of like a third-person action game. It's okay. I've only played it a little bit, but it's pretty cool from what I saw. This one's amazing. Gun Valkyrie. I was going to put this on my original uh, Xbox Diamonds of the Rough video that I did a few years back. This was going to be on the list. Only problem was... This game is not in HD, and there are a certain amount of games that will not play on an Xbox that is hooked up through the five plug system. Component, composite, I cannot remember. Okay. Somebody please let me know. Please. What is that one? So I couldn't capture footage, or video of this at all, and it kind of saddened me, so I didn't put this on the list, even though I really wanted to. But it's an awesome third-person action game. A lot of aerial stuff going on. Supremely awesome graphics. Like, Otogi went on the list because I couldn't put this on the list. Component. Thank you very much. Too quick. You are too quick. Ha! <laughs> um, it's amazing. It's one of the best, like, 3D beat-em-up type games out there. Because, like, doing the beat-em-up stuff in the air is amazing. <laughs> Porno! Uh, this game got recalled because boobs. B-E-W-B-S. The guy game. So I really didn't have any interest in picking this up because I was just like, it's a trivia game. Who cares? Yeah, it's got some scantily, yeah, scantily clad women in it. Turned out they weren't women. They were girls. <laughs> so... I guess they really didn't do any background checks when they invited these girls who were on the beach for spring break 
Uh, when they invited them to take place in the game, they didn't find out their real ages, so they lied. And parents found out about their, or the girls' parents found out about it, and were like, no, these girls are not 18. These girls are like 15 and 16 or something. So the whole idea behind this is if you answer a question wrong, you have to like take your top off. And they show live video boobs. So turns out some of the girls in the game were underage. So got recalled because it's classified as like, like, unacceptable porn <laughs> but when i found out about the game getting recalled was when i ran out to pick up a copy because i wanted to get it before it disappeared i didn't have any plans in like playing it or anything but i was just kind of like i need to have it as a collectible and i played it a little bit and the game is stupid the game is just dumb but there's boobs in it that was it's um it's a bad game but its main selling point was the fact that it had like women's breasts flopping around in it captain algebra is actually streaming this right now not right now right now but currently streaming this on his channel uh half-life 2 he's playing this version of it not the uh orange box like i played uh but sequel to half-life obviously half-life i have on the playstation 2 uh it was originally going to come out on the dreamcast and i was super excited about that but it got canceled because the dreamcast exploded um but I played this one before I played the first one. And I really, really liked it, but I never beat it. And then I got the orange box and I beat Half-Life 2 on the orange box. And it's a fantastic first-person shooter with a really awesome, really engrossing story. Like, aside from Halo, this is like one of the first first-person shooters where I was like, the story is just as good as the game I'm playing. Uh, and I was really interested. And I went back and I was going to play through Halo 1. Still haven't done it, though. <laughs> but it's a fantastic game. I highly recommend it. I wanted to have it just because I'm a Half-Life fan now. So I wanted to have it in the collection, even though I have my preferred version on the xbox 360 and then we have the juggernaut that sold how many copies of or how many consoles let alone copies we got halo this is the game of the year edition uh this i got from jeff at the uh blessed show i don't think this has anything extra on it but whatever it's just got some foil stuff on the cover like the game of the year and the title is now like a foil thing. That's pretty awesome, though. And he also gave me Halo 2, uh, which I don't think is a great game. Um, I like Halo 1. I like Halo. I like all the other Halo games more than Halo. Everyone crit or, uh, says Halo 2 is awesome. I found it kind of glitchy, and I didn't like the fact that you had to play as the uh, Arbiter. Or was it Arbiter? Yeah. The Covenant guy. I didn't like how it got broken up like that. So I always found Halo 2 kind of a disappointment, even though everyone was like, going, oh my god, it's the best game ever. I was like, nah, I don't... I disagree. Not to say it's not good. It's really good. Uh, it's just not great. But multiplayer was where this game is at. This game... Oh, Jesus. I used to have Halo LAN parties because of this game. And I, we're talking two Xboxes linked together. Four people in a room playing on each Xbox. I remember at my... I was still living at home when uh, this game was a thing. And like, I, like I had four people in my bedroom and four people in my parents' living room. And we'd be screaming at each other back and forth, like over, like the downstairs. We're screaming at people downstairs, cursing at each other, uh, just throwing insults back and forth. I mean, like, like uh, talking shit to each other it was so much fun. Oh God, <sighs> memories are flooding back. I wish I, I think I need to have another one of those parties at my house. Uh, anyone want to come? <laughs> And then we've got the Halo 2 multiplayer map pack. And this was a release. These are all the multiplayer maps that you were able to download through Xbox Live for Halo 2. But if there were people out there that didn't have access to the internet, they released them on the physical format a little while later. And because those are no longer available to download, I wanted this in my collection so I can have those levels to play as if I ever do have another LAN party. Which is awesome. But seriously, I want another land party. <laughs> I really do. Uh, this is Harry Potter Quidditch World Cup. I got this for like a couple of dollars at Half Price Books. And it's not a Harry Potter game. It's basically just, like I said, Quidditch. Uh, and I still haven't played it. So I don't know if it's good or not. But Quidditch in video game form sounds pretty cool. I hope it's actually playable. We shall see. Uh, Heroes of the Pacific. This is another like dogfight game. Graphics are absolutely phenomenal. Well, you can see some of the stuff going on in here. It's kind of a fun game. And you can see I got this at Goodwill for a whopping $1.99. Highly recommend that one. That one's really fun. Um, trying to get all the Lord of the Rings 
things, uh, and one of them was The Hobbit. Uh, this is not the best game ever. It's kind of overly cartoony and goofy, but then again, so was the book it's based on. It wasn't supposed to be like super serious like the Lord of the Rings stories. Uh, but yeah, it's like, for some reason, they made uh, Bilbo look like Willow. Don't ask me why. But I see that cover and I go, Will off, good! Out of the way, peck! You know, it's, I don't get it. But it's not a bad game. It's like an action-adventure RPG light. What the fuck just fell out of this when I opened it? Oh, I forgot. Sometimes half-price books pays off because I forgot that this actually ca still came with the card that was originally packaged with the game when you bought it back in the day. Somebody actually kept this thing together. But it's a decent action RPG light type situation. There are better games in that franchise on home consoles. Let me pull these closer so I can reach them. <laughs> Hulk. This is the Hulk movie from 2003, I think. 2003? Excuse me. Yes. Uh, the one with Eric Banner that everybody hates, and I do not like either, but... There were some pretty decent Hulk games available before this. So I was like, shouldn't be much better. Or shouldn't be much worse. It's actually a lot better than the movie. I will give it that. It's a beat-em-up with the Hulk. Everything is destructible. Uh, it just is all wrapped around a pretty bad movie. But I can't complain. The game is actually not too bad. Uh, let's see here. Hunter the Reckoning. Why is that over here? Oh, that's why. Yeah, Hunter the Reckoning. There's another game in the series. I think it's called Wayward. But these are also dungeon crawlers. I think this is also some sort of an a tabletop RPG. I think this might be based in World of Darkness. Which is like Vampire the Masquerade and all that. I think. I think. Yeah, White Wolf. Yeah, this is part of uh, World of Darkness. Which I have played tabletop wise. I played a vampire rock star. Which was kind of awesome. Um, the fan film that I was working on. Uh, when I talked to the people who are doing the special effects for me, because I did not have any knowledge in doing CGI, uh, told me that they could make a better game than this in their sleep. And I dared them to do it, and it never happened. <laughs> but it's a really fun beat-em-up, and it's kind of like horror theme, so I could not complain. I enjoyed it very much. I need to... I actually did buy the sequel to this at that uh, Video Games Then and Now store that I go to that's a little while away from me. And... Uh, brought it home and it had the wrong game in it it had this game in it so i was like i already have the first game i bought the sequel where do you have the disc for the sequel the guy's like no sorry i must have put it in the wrong case i'm like well give me my money back god damn it uh and here's another incredible hulk game this is incredible hulk ultimate destruction and this one is like if michael bay directed a hulk movie <laughs> everything is destructible it's absolute insanity and it's actually really really fun this is probably out of all the games that have come out based on The Incredible Hulk, this is probably my favorite game out of all of them. Bar none. This is the best one. It is so much fun. It's just destroy everything. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. This is like Indiana Jones Tomb Raider, which Tomb Raider is a ripoff of Indiana Jones. So why not have Indiana Jones rip off Tomb Raider? <laughs> It's actually really cool. Um, I like this one a lot. I don't think this one is based off of a PC game. But whatever. It's its own. It's not based on any movie. It's its own separate Indiana Jones story. And it's actually really fun what I played of it. I remember I got stuck at one point and had to put it down. I will go back to it eventually. Uh, I think this came out for the, yeah, the PlayStation 2 also. But obviously I wanted to get it because HD why I needed it for HD I don't know but it's in television lives it's a compilation of how many in television games 60 over 60 in television games I bet you 10 bucks those Tron games aren't on here no they're not <laughs> but you got stuff like armor battle body slam super pro wrestling bomb squad which I think is one that has the voice acting in it or the voice uh, module is required Shark Shark. Oh, God, I gotta play that. Yep. Star Strike, Sub Hunt, Thin Ice, Utopia, Vectron, Pinball, Space Armada, Spiker, Super Beach Volleyball, Super Pro Volleyball, Night Stalker, Hover Force, Buzz Bombers, and Checkers. Yep. <laughs> Had to pick this up because I love the movie. Uh, the Italian Job. 
It's trying to be like break or uh, burnout. Not nearly as good. But you get to play as uh, Mini Coopers, which is kind of awesome, even though it's basically a giant commercial for that car. I mean, come on, they're all over the cover, too. The, the movie was kind of an ad for uh, Mini Coopers also, but the movie I thought was awesome. So I definitely wanted this, and it's a pretty fun racing game, you know, a crime racing game. It's not bad. Here's an awesome one I needed to devote more time to. Jade Empire Limited Edition. This is by Bioware, so it's Knights of the Old Republic in China. And it's fantastic. Two discs. Uh, this has all the bonus content on the second disc. But yeah, it's an RPG. It's an action RPG uh, with martial arts. And I had this back in the day and I loved it. And just like Knights of the Old Republic, I got stuck at one part and I never went back to it. And Because I didn't want to have to start over, which I was definitely going to have to do. So I definitely want to play through this again because I hear it's actually a better game to play now than back then showed this off on friday in the uh pickup video for january jaws unleashed this is one of the games i had on the ps2 and i repurchased it on the xbox because hd and it's a super fun shark game that is absolutely crazy and dumb <laughs> and ridiculous but i absolutely love it had to have that back in my collection on the xbox that's the console that i originally owned the game for back in the day was the xbox Here's a sequel to an awesome Dreamcast game that's only available on the Xbox. Because for some reason, even though... This is what confused me the most about the Xbox. So, Sega went to Microsoft for help. Microsoft said, no, everything we learned working on the Dreamcast is going to go towards us making our own console, which ended up becoming the Xbox. You would think that Sega would be like, you know, fuck those guys. They didn't help us. We're not going to develop for their platform. We're just going to do stuff for Nintendo now because, you know, Nintendo and Sega were rivals for a while in the 90s. We're, I'd rather make games, like, if I were them, I'd be like, I'd rather make games for Nintendo than for Xbox or for Microsoft. No, they made exclusives for the Xbox, like Jet Set Radio Future. I would have been, like, pissed that they didn't offer to help. But they did. They wanted to make that money, so they released stuff on the Xbox. And this is a great sequel to a great game on the Dreamcast. It's more of the same. <coughs> it's like rollerblading and graffiti spraying and stuff like that and you know there's some beat em up aspects to it a lot of grinding awesome soundtrack i love the graphics which is kind of like the uh uh cell shaded but everything's really angular i love the way these games look and sound and control and feel i, I just i absolutely love them i wish they would make another game in the series i really do there's a really cool beat em up Oh, it's kind of a dungeon crawler too, if I remember correctly. But this one puts out in 720. That's crazy. And this came out in what year? 2002? 2006. What? There was... Oh, okay. Whatever. Uh, Justice League Heroes. It's actually a really cool beat-em-up. I like it a lot. It's kind of like a dungeon crawler and a beat-em-up. You know, well, dungeon crawlers technically are beat-em-ups. Chris... Uh, but I highly recommend this one. It's a lot better than the reviews made it out to be back in the day. This game is not. It's called Kakuto Chojin Back Alley Brutal. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and it is not good. Uh, it looks cool, and it plays really well with an arcade stick if you have one, but the fighting is not fun. Like, really. It looks great. It sounds great. It does not play great, which is my big issue. It's not the greatest. But I think this one has... Yeah, you can play four fighters at the same time in the arena. If the game isn't fun to play, why bother? Then we have these, which are freaking amazing. So we have Kingdom Under Fire, The Crusaders, and the sequel, Kingdom Under Fire, Heroes. These are sort of Muso games if i remember correctly uh, the thing i remember the most about these games was how they looked these games looked like xbox 360 games on an xbox i mean the graphics were so well done and detailed it was kind of mind-boggling at the time like i could not believe that i was playing something that looked this good on that console and then like the 360 came out and i was like i thought i was playing stuff that looked this good on the xbox what what it's, they're amazing. They're, I mean, what did they put these put out in? Yeah, 480p. But even without the 480p, I was playing these on like a standard CRT. 
and it just looked fantastic. I could not believe it. These games are some of the, my favorites in my uh, Xbox collection. And there's a, I think there's another one on the 360, but you can't beat it. Uh, the game uh, had a glitch in it, and the company that developed it went under before they could put out a patch to fix that glitch. So the game is actually unbeatable, from what I understand. And for some reason, my nose is running a lot. It's not cold in here or anything. I think it's because I'm talking too much. Circle of Doom. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. I got, I Jason knows everything, man. Yeah, I think that's the one that is unbeatable because of that glitch, and it can never be fixed. So the game is essentially, like, you can't, you can't complete it. Uh, picked this one up when I was in L.A. visiting my brother at some out-of-the-way game store. We were going to a ramen restaurant for lunch, and we're, we had to walk through, like, an outdoor mall to get there. And as we're walking through, like, the thor the main thoroughfare, I just happened to glance over, and I was like, is that a retro game store? My brother's like, yeah, I think so. And I'm like, I'll be with you in a minute. I need to make a pit stop real quick. And I went in there, and I found this and one other game. And this is a combo, King of the Fighters 2003 and King of the Fighters 2002 on one disc. Sorry, two discs. <laughs> Um, and I guess this is also available on the PlayStation 2, but on the PlayStation 2, it is super expensive because the guy actually had the copy of this sitting behind him, behind the counter. And when I bought this, he was like, oh, great game. Great game. You're getting a deal here because I got it back here and it's like $80 and I paid like 20 for this. I was like, yeah, I think I'll take the $20 version. I actually liked my fighters on the Xbox back in the day more than the PlayStation 2 for some reason. But yeah, it's just ports of Neo Geo games over to the Xbox, and they are fantastic. I love King of the Fighters. Absolutely love them. See, I haven't played Circle of Doom because I, I mean, I own it. I didn't want to play it because I'm like, I can't beat it. <laughs> Why would I want to play it? This game is shit. Absolute shit. And I bought it back in the day, found out it was shit, and yet when I got back into collecting and I found it at a store, I bought it again knowing that it was complete shit. That's what happens when you have shit for brains. Uh, Land of the Dead, Road to Fiddler's Green. I love Land of the Dead. It's probably my second favorite dead movie from the Romero Dead films. Uh, so back in the day, I absolutely had to have the video game version. And it's a first-person shooter that takes place like concurrent to the movie. It doesn't really have anything to do with the movie. It's like a side story to the film uh, that ends up at Fiddler's Green where most of the movie takes place but it has nothing to do with the characters from that movie uh and it's a terrible first person shooter it's glitchy it's like half finished it's broken in a lot of areas it looked like it felt like it was super rushed just to like i remember that they were trying to get this out before the when the movie came out to tie into the movie and it got delayed so then i remember it was going to come out when the movie came out on video and that didn't happen either. And it came out like a year later and it still felt like it was unfinished. <laughs> it is not a good game. And I don't know what could possibly, what can you do with this online? You can play this online with multiplayer. Who would want to do that? Not me. But I bought it because I love the movie. And when I found out for a few bucks, I said, sure, why not? I'll add it to the, to the collection because I love the movie so much. But probably not going to play it. Uh, here's an awesome one. L.A. Rush. Uh, this is a sequel to San Francisco Rush. I think this only came out on the consoles. It's never got an arcade version, or this never had an arcade version. And it's yet another awesome arcade racing game. I absolutely love these games. Had to have that. Did not even know that that existed until I found it in a store. And I was talking about Blood Omen 2 earlier. Well, we've got the final game in the series, Legacy of Kane Defiance. This is like where all the storylines from all the different games in this series like converged. So you have the Kane games you have legacy of Kane, and then you have legacy of Kane 2 well that was or blood omen legacy of Kane, and then you have blood omen 2 and then you have uh soul reaver 1 and 2 and then both of the characters so you got raziel from the uh i just said the name <laughs> the christ chris your brain farting it's because i'm tired uh, soul reaver you got raziel from the soul reaver games teaming up with Kane from the Legacy of Kane games or the Blood Omen games to tell this to finish off this story and it's absolutely nuts so I love it absolutely love it and then we've got all of this so I was talking about wanting all those Lord of the Rings type games so that's why I have the Hobbit 
Uh, also have Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring, which is not based on the movie. This is based on the book. Uh, this came out before the movies were out, I think. This came out in 2002. When did the first movie come out? 2001? Yeah, because for some reason this is the one that's this is more based on the book than the movies. But whatever. It's a fun 3D game. And then you have the ones that are based on the movies. You have Two Towers and you have Return of the King. And these are beat-em-ups. Fantastic beat-em-ups. I was playing when I picked these up because I realized I wanted to have these for the Xbox also. Just like all those other games I was talking about last week. And in my PlayStation 2 stream. But I had the Two Towers for the GameCube. And I was like, why did I buy this for the GameCube? I don't excuse me i don't know so i went out and picked up a copy of it for the xbox got rid of my gamecube version and i had this for the playstation 2 god i got the hiccups now what the hell i had return of the king for the playstation 2 turned that in in exchange for this and i was playing the two towers and i forgot how fun these games are um i was playing through this and it's awesome that you can go through each level over and over again but with all the different characters you have three characters to choose from you can play as aragorn you can play as legolas or you can play as gimli and you can go through each level with each character and it's a slightly different mechanic on how you can play them because each person has their different attributes and normally i'm like i just want to play through the game play through each level once just get through the game i kept going back and replaying the levels with each character just to try it out and i was having so much fun doing it and for a game that came out in what was this 2000 and two um it that's kind of amazing that it was that it's still that fun so this game is more of the same except now you can play as um gandalf also uh which is kind of awesome and i think there's also levels where you can play as frodo and sam maybe Gollum. Eh, i can't remember play as nine different characters gandalf aragorn legolas gimli sam and frodo that's not nine characters <laughs> I think you can play as Gollum too, uh, but fantastic. This one is just kind of okay. Ah, John, no! And now it's dead. Don't go toward the light. <laughs> there we go. And that brings us to this. Uh, Lord of the Rings, the third age. This is an RPG based on the movie. Well, it's sort of based on the movies and sort of not i mean it takes liberties from the movies and kind of makes its own little storyline out of it um but yeah new characters and everything even though gandalf is in it <laughs> and i think aragorn and look yeah aragorn and legolas are in it too uh but it's like this is an rpg in the lord of the rings universe and that was a rad ass idea back in the day so that's why i wanted it so bad and i need to play through this this will definitely be one of the rpgs that i play this year We have Magic the Gathering Battlegrounds. Um, this isn't a card game, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this one is actually just like an RPG. Is it? 16 fight arenas conjure countless combinations from over 70 different spells. Battle online. Rise to prominence by building skills through 60 single player quests. I haven't played it, so I can't really say. But I... I knew this did not have anything to do with cards. So it's just like skirmishes. I'm going to have to try this out pretty soon. But I liked, I used to like Magic the Gathering. I used to play it, but not anymore. And then I was talking about the, the game that came out before this. This is the last game I have to talk about tonight. Um, I was talking about the earlier game and how a lot of people hated it when it came out. Except for me, because I'm a huge fan of the films. So because I liked Enter the Matrix so much, they, day one... I went and picked up Path of Neo. And uh, this was the one that is poop. <laughs> I actually, when I first got it, I loved it. I absolutely loved it until I got to the end of the game. Okay, so the thing is, they wanted another Matrix game because Enter the Matrix sold millions and millions of copies and made a ton of money. So obviously we're going to make another game, but the series is over what do you do you make you try to retell the movies now that you've already got the three films out there you've told a you made a video game that is a side story to those movies let's retell all three movies now but from one person's point of view instead of all these other characters the only thing is for some reason the wachowskis who had input on this game on path of neo um 
decided to start changing things and it didn't make any effing sense so like when neo is in his office and he gets that call from morpheus and he's like do what i say or you're gonna get captured so turn left here in the cubicles and turn left here and go in this office open this window climb outside the window if you want to get out in the movie you get captured and then you get interrogated by smith and you get the little vagina mouth thing going on for some reason in the game you get away and you get on the motorcycle with trinity and you drive off why do they decide to change that i don't know it kind of didn't make sense and there's a lot of stuff like that in this game and it, like when i played through it the first time i was like i'd be like that was interesting and then it would keep up like things like that would keep happening I'd be like that was interesting and then i remember i liked playing through this so much that when i went like a year later i was like i want to play through it again and as i was playing through it the second time i was like no this is not fun this is stupid because when you get to the end of the game what happens at the end of the movies neo has that fight with with smith you know flying all over the city and then neo sacrifices himself to save everybody but the thing is what do you do when you get to that point in the in the game there's no game there's nothing else to play so what do they do all of a sudden the wachowskis pop up on screen when the final fight's gonna happen and they're like pixel characters because like one of them was transitioning at the time and um was it lana was transitioning when the the game was in production so i don't think they wanted to reveal that just yet so they were just like these little pixel characters and they're talking about how yeah we realized that while we were making the video game that certain things weren't going to work out the same way as they did in the movie so we had to make changes and when it comes to the ending especially because you know like you don't want to play a game where your main character dies do you so here's a brand new ending for you hope you like it and no because you end up fighting uh a, a gigantic agent smith that's made out of garbage like literal garbage it's stupid and i was like yeah this is not what i wanted in this game i kind of just wanted to play through like the storyline of the movie the way it worked out in the movies who cares if neo died at the end of the movie spoiler alert by the way <laughs> uh if it worked if it was in the movie it should be in the game too i don't understand it but it plays just like enter the matrix uh, there's a lot of cool things you can i mean there's still a lot of cool stuff in here like you actually can do the training sessions that like neo would get like oh i know kung fu that scene where like he gets plugged in and learns all this stuff you actually can do like those missions where you're learning things so like you have like a, a samurai level where you're doing one of those training levels there's like the gunfighting one there's a kung fu one it's awesome outside of that this is poop i mean it's like yeah there's awesome beats from the movies in there but the game itself is just a, it was a bad idea so everything i say positive about enter the matrix i say the opposite for this because this was a step in the wrong direction as far as i'm concerned anyway uh so that's it for the first part of my xbox collection um yeah next week i'll be back on thursday 7 p.m central for part two and that'll be the final one i did not i turned out i thought i had more games for the xbox than the playstation 2 no it's the other way around i have way more playstation 2 games so this will only have to be two videos instead of three like i originally thought but depending on what happens tomorrow when i get my bonus that might change <laughs> um so yes next week part two uh and the final one in the xbox series of live streams i hope i see you guys there that would be fantastic um I'm probably going to have some games in there that will show up also in the pickups video for February at the end of the month because I'm probably going to buy some new stuff. Um, I don't know if they'll be here by the next stream, but we shall see. Also got some content I'm working on. I'm currently, I think I talked about this on Friday, that I'm currently trying to finish a screenplay that I've been working on for like the past three or four years. And I'm really trying to get it done so I can say that I finally finished it. And that's why I haven't really been putting out any new content. But I have content ready to, like, filmed. I just need to edit it. And uh, so I do have a uh, top 10 NES game response to Captain Algebra uh, that I'm going to be, that I have filmed. I just need to edit. Uh, I also have my Diamonds in the Rough licensed games video filmed. I just need to edit that. Um, I also have my Retron 77 video film. I just need to edit that, even if I decide to actually put that one together. But I have more videos. Like, I have a list that I've written out. I'm going to be doing a lot of Diamonds in the Rough this year. I've got ones for... I've got uh, games for each console that I own. Games written out that I want to talk about in, for each console that are Diamonds in the Rough. Including multiple ones 
or sequels to ones I already have. So there's going to be another one for the Xbox. There's going to be another one for the PlayStation 2. There's definitely going to be another one for the original PlayStation. So look out for all of that stuff coming up. Lots of new stuff on top of the regular collection live streams. Only thing is, what am I going to do when I finish all these collection live streams? When I've gone through my newest console, what am I going to do? That's where Twitch comes in because I'm going to get back to streaming on Twitch, video game or video game footage or streaming gameplay. Uh, because I just got a new laptop and it can stream on Twitch very well. So that's going to make a comeback. And that's probably how I'm going to be playing all these RPGs that I'm talking about. I'm going to be streaming them. Walk mark my words. I'm probably going to be playing one on stream and playing another one off stream. Just so I can knock two of them out at the same time. So keep an eye out for that. I'll be talking about that once I get that up and running. But that will be once the live streams are done. Because uh, Thursday is the day that I would normally live stream on Twitch when I was doing it. So once I'm finished live streaming on YouTube on Thursdays, it will switch over to Twitch on Thursdays. So if you want to see what I have on my channel, I don't really have anything much there right now. Everything that I had done live stream back in 2019 has already gone off the uh, site. So keep an eye out for that. I'll definitely keep there. I'll be making posts about that the closer I get to it. So thanks for joining me tonight. I hope to see you all next week. And this is Chris, the old ass retro gamer, signing off. Have a good night, everybody.